Hey guys, for this month's Patron Extra video, I'm going to attempt to address a question from Patron Bill Elliott on when to know when your plane needs sharpening. Um, now, I want to um, clarify or, or at least qualify. Um, this is not something that's very easy to show or demonstrate. Um, it really comes down to feel. Um, so it it's, may not be easy for me to actually show you, okay, this plane needs to be sharpened. Um, because in most cases, when I'm working with hand planes, I'm sharpening my blades before they get so dull that visually you can see a difference. Uh, it really comes down a lot to feel. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate that feel with these two planes here. Um, I don't know how well it's going to come through the actual, um, that actual um, subjective, um, I don't even know how to describe it, just that feeling of, of how, how it changes. Um, so essentially what I have is I have a smooth plane that has been freshly sharpened and set for a fine cut. And I have a jack plane that has been used quite a bit, uh, is pretty dull, and needs to be resharpened. Uh, I'm going to use them on this same board of poplar. We're going to use the edge only because I don't want to have to deal with the additional complexities of having a wide face where you might be taking um, uh, taking some material off one part of the board and then that lowers that part of the board so the plane won't cut there until you take off part of the other side of the board. Um, I hope this is all you know making sense but essentially I just want to use this edge because it's going to give us consistency between the two planes and how the two different planes act and that's really what I want to show. So what I've done with this piece of poplar is I have straightened it with a joiner plane and I've smoothed it out. So now we're going to be able to see kind of how these two planes cut, what the differences are, and how you might be able to tell when your plane is getting a little bit dull and needs to have the edge touched up. So if I take the smoother and I start to plane with the smoother, what you'll see is it glides through the wood almost effortlessly. Try saying that three times fast. Okay. The other thing, so I'm getting a, a full width shaving, the full full width of the, the edge. The surface is smooth. And here's the cool thing. I can plane with this with almost no pressure at all. I can just push forward pressure and the iron stays engaged, okay? I get pretty much a full width shaving. After starting that cut, with no downward pressure on the plane whatsoever, and I'm getting a full width shaving, the plane is keeping itself engaged in the cut with nothing more than forward pressure. I'm not having to bear down on the plane. Um, I think I watched Paul Sellers do this once actually with a rope. He just pulled on the front knob with a rope even. So if you've got an iron that's sharp, you should not have to put a lot of downward bearing pressure on the plane. The iron should grab when it hits the edge of the wood and it should stay engaged. Now let's see what happens with this one where this is a little bit dull. Okay, I get it engaged and I start to cut and it, did you see that jump there? The iron stopped cutting and then grabbed again. Now it stopped cutting and grabbed again. And so what it's doing is it's skating and it's skittering across the surface. And I'm getting these broken shavings. Let me see if I can give you an even better look at that. Okay, so here's our smoother. Get it engaged. Just one hand, no downward pressure full length, unbroken shaving comes off the edge of that poplar board. Okay. Now, let me go back to the jack plane. Get it started. There it goes. Skipping, jumping. Okay, that one held a little bit. So maybe it doesn't need, uh, it's not quite as dull. If it was a little bit duller, it would, it would be even worse. Nope, there it goes. See, now it wouldn't even start real well. 
and it's, it has this tendency to jump and skip. And what that broken shaving tells you, even though you know this is a pretty, um, pretty fine shaving, what that broken shaving is telling me is that that edge is starting to get dull and the iron is disengaging from the wood. So that means that I'm going to need to put additional pressure down here in order to keep the iron engaged and get a full length, full width shaving. Whereas with the smoother, I didn't have to do that with the freshly sharpened iron. Um, it's still giving me a decent surface off of the jack plane with an iron that's a little dull. But I mean, I can feel this iron and I can kind of run my fingers across the blade. And while it's sort of sharp, um, it's just not sharp enough compared to, to this blade that I, I don't want to run my fingers across because I can feel the difference even when I run my fingers across that it really grabs my fingers even just like it grabs the wood. It stays engaged on its own in the wood. The surface even feels a little bit smoother off of this plane than this plane because this is probably not cutting just quite as cleanly. So the, and the, then the other thing is what you'll notice is that when I push on this plane, it's very easy to push through um, and I don't have to put a lot of muscle behind it. When I start to plane with this plane, I can feel right from the beginning. And again, this is one of those things where I was saying um, it's going to be difficult for me to demonstrate because there's so much in this is, is feel, is about feel. But I can feel I have to push this plane a lot harder than I have to push the smoother. And not only that, this is a 45 degree frog, this is a 50 degree frog. So at the same level of sharpness, theoretically, I should have to push this plane harder because it's a, it's a higher angle. The blade is pitched at a higher angle than the jack plane. But I, I have to push this plane harder. So um, again, it's just one of, it's a lot of, of tactile things that you have to pay attention to while you're using the tool that's gonna tell you whether or not that tool is sharp or starting to get dull. When it gets really dull, it's going to be obvious because the, the blade is probably just gonna skate across the surface. It's not gonna plane at all. You're gonna have to increase the depth of cut to get it to plane at all. Um, so these are just a couple of little things that will help you to realize when your tools might be getting dull. If you have to push it harder, um, if you're using a chisel, if it seems like you have to hit it harder with the mallet, um, if the surface is not as clean or as smooth as it should be, if you're getting a lot more, um, if you're chopping with a chisel and then you're pulling a lot more fibers out instead of cutting them cleanly, if you have to push the tool harder um, than you did when you first started, um, you know, maybe it's time to stop and touch up that edge. Um, and again, this is a very subjective thing and it's really going to come down to you having to spend time with your tools. There's not going to be a black and white answer that says, up oh, uh, halfway through this, up oh, there it is, I better stop and sharpen. Um, it's really going to come down to feel and your own personal relationship with your tools and you're really going to have to get to use your tools and understand because that's really the only way you're truly going to know when they need sharpening is to use them and understand the difference between a sharp tool um, and one that's not so sharp. Um, I can't tell you, you know, definitely black and white when that's going to happen. Um, it's really subjective. Um, so get in your shop, sharpen up your tools, use them, um, and just get a feel. And if you have different planes, you know, use one until you think it's dull. Sharpen up a different one and try this experiment, what, how, what the difference is between the two. See if you can just take that unbroken smoother shaving or jack plane shaving, barely even um, pushing the plane across the surface uh, with no downward pressure whatsoever. And if you can do that, you know, if that plane engages itself, the blade engages itself, um, then you know that that, that tool is probably pretty sharp and, and, and good to go. And if you run into a situation where um, 
the blade starts to disengage in the cut and it's slipping a little bit and you're getting broken shavings, um, then you're probably, then it's probably time for you to sharpen.